Delay in payment of national health insurance claims is crippling activities of some six hospitals in the Volta and northern regions operating under the Christian Health Association of Ghana, CHAG. Some of the hospitals have started laying off uh, some of their staff uh, paid with internally generated funds. Stanley Niblo has more of the following reports. Take a look. Health facilities supervised by the Christian Health Association of Ghana are in debt. This is because 11 to 13 months period services rendered to the National Health Insurance Authority have not been paid. The Batoa Catholic Hospital is a major referral centre in North Tong districts. It records close to 500 OPD cases daily and provision of good care can be assured. However, the facility is struggling to meet the demands of the patients. Our sources at the hospital say the NHIA owes the facility 13 months arrears from November 2018. The source further indicated the hospital is in death and would consider cash and carry. The Richard Novati Catholic Hospital, formerly known as Komboni Hospital, is one of the two hospitals in the South Thong district. The hospital is highly indebted to 115 suppliers of both medical consumables and non-consumables. Records with the facility show the hospital owes one of the supplier 400,000 cities. 86 of staff here are paid with proceeds from the internally generated funds. The NHIA owes them 11 months claims. Management has not been able to complete projects they have started. The CHAG facilities at Kmandu, Amfuega and Abo in the Volta region face similar challenges. The Evangelical Church Ghana Hospital in Kbandai in the northern region is also in debt due to failure to pay claims. This hospital also has 11 months arrears to be settled by NHIA. Already, 12 staff paid with internally generated funds have been laid off. The northern region has six shag facilities, old claims arrears. Our sources close to CHAG executives indicated that last week the management body of NHIA promised to defray part of the arrears by Friday, January 24, but failed. The affected hospitals say part payment of the arrears would not solve their financial situation because they are heavily indebted to their suppliers. All right, and that was a report by Stanley Niblu on uh, the state of the national health insurance um, scheme on the private and public uh, serv health service providers. We're speaking more about it and the impact on uh, the businesses of uh, these uh, health service service providers. And Frank Toblu Richard, who is a uh, uh, executive director of the private health insurance and um, HISPAG, which is Health Insurance Service Providers Association of Ghana. He's here with us this morning to speak on the issue. You're welcome to TV3 New Day. Thank you, my sister. Very good to have you, you. Uh, this morning. Uh, I saw, took a look at the report, and I think it's uh, having a toll on your businesses. I'd first and foremost like to understand how serious, um, you know, the non-payment of the arrears is, you know, how, how serious it is on each of the businesses that are within this association. Um... Once again, thank you very much. As I begin to speak to you, the National Health Insurance Scheme, in other words, the total revenue that comes to healthcare service providers nationwide that are under the National Health Insurance Scheme is about 90 to 95%. Mm. That is the total revenue. And our IGF is just about 5 to 10% if you do the mathematics yeah. right. So that alone should tell us that at any point in time the National Health Insurance is unable to pay, then it means that the providers are in a big trouble. Yeah. That is the situation we find ourselves in. So if you perchance have a provider complaining, then it means that he's seriously complaining on something that uh, is affecting him. That mm. is the situation. And what's the relationship like with uh, the suppliers? He, uh, one, the, the um, me, me mentioned that uh, you know the so some of the suppliers have, have been cut off. So what is the relationship now with? I'm, I'm sure it's in some areas. How about the other areas? What's the relationship between the service providers and the suppliers as well? Because business has to go on. Very well. You see, 
Um, when you talk about suppliers, suppliers are in various segments. We have those who supply pharmaceutical products. Okay. Those who supply um, consumables, the gloves, the candlers, strangers. Uh, the strangers, and those who supply infusion, yeah. and a whole lot. So they are in various segments. Now, but most often than not, we refer to the pharmaceutical products, ignoring other side. Okay. Now, let me say it this way. Today, you and I know that the dollar is rising at a very fast pace. Exactly. Now, when you buy products from pharmaceutical companies, day one, you haven't paid. Day two, you haven't paid. Day three, you haven't paid. Day four, they will not supply you. Mm. Just because you are unable to pay. Because you have not been able to pay, they cut supply to you. You can also not service the people who visit your facility. Yeah. That is a major challenge there. So you see that it's a, a whole cycle. of circle. Yeah. It's a circle that you are running. So you get the money, you pay your staff, yeah. you pay suppliers, and then you move on in that circle. So the money comes, you pay your staff, you pay utilities, you pay other bills, mm -hmm. and then finally you pay your suppliers. And then you go back and provide service, you yeah. submit the claims to the National Health Insurance, and then they come back in that circle. Right. So when there is a break in the circle, then of course you have a problem. Mm, that I is the situation. And, and I understand also that some of the staff have been laid off because, you know, the hospitals are unable to meet, you know, the staff requirements in terms of paying the staff. They're unable to pay them. How is, how is that also affecting the quality of the business? Is that saying that the, the business is going to die altogether, the private institutions or the public um, health institutions? Uh, you see, there is one important thing we need to understand. Mm -hmm. If the National Health Insurance owes a facility, no matter what the case may be, okay. they come back to pay. Okay. But the duration, the time within which they used to pay is where the problem is. Mm. Now, in a situation where you can have some leverage or you have some uh, financing activities that will support you yeah. to be able to remain in business within the period that the health insurance is not paying you, mm. you don't have a problem. What kind of but as I speak, okay. those things do not exist. For example, you're looking at a banking sector right. where you can walk to the bank and they will give you a facility. Exactly. You can use it to run. Now, when they give you the loan, what it means is the interest component on the loan you have right. to bear. That's true. Now, by the time the health insurance is able to pay you, you realize that the interest component largely erodes into your claims that you have submitted to the insurance to pay. So you come back to zero. Mm. So in a situation where you have the banking sector supporting you yeah. and the health insurance is paying um, averagely, you realize that you continue to be in business. Yes. But that situation, as I speak to you, do not exist. Is it be because the um, NHIA is not paying? Regularly. Our, okay, regularly. regularly. I understand that it's been well over 13 months or so. And so the banks would certainly not come in if there's no assurity that they will get their funds back. Uh, in, in fact, for 13 months, I do not agree. Okay. Is they, they do not owe the providers up to 13 months. Okay. That one, um, I don't agree. Um, we have a situation of extended period of non-payment of claims, but not up to 13. Okay, so what's the, what's the highest then? Um, we are looking, uh, in an isolated cases, we are looking at um, 10 months. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Some providers will tell you I have received up to um, eight months. Some, you know, in some cases. And then there are some uh, exceptional cases where they have challenges okay. with the claims that they have, uh, we as providers have submitted to them. In that case, the law requires that they should get back to us. Okay. And then we have a conversation on the claims that we have submitted to them so that we can agree on a common uh, uh, thing so that right. we move forward from that point. But what are some of the things that would have brought up those challenges? Uh, you see, there are times you submitted the claims of, let's say, 50 Ghana cities. Right. And there is an error. You know, when you are processing your claims for submission to the health insurance scheme, mm. you know, it's a human institution. institution Surely somebody, instead of two CDs, will make it, let's say, three 20. CDs. Okay. Now, when that happens, the health insurance, is, it, it's, it's a mandatory requirement 
on the health insurance to get you, the provider, informed that instead of two CDs, it is three CDs. Can you give a reason? Yeah. And that is what sometimes we refer to as a clinical audit. You understand? Can you give a reason why it should not be, uh, this amount should not be deducted from your claims for X, Y, Z reason? Yeah. Now, if you are able to explain, then of course you can go. But if you are not able to explain, then whatever that there is have to be taken out of your amount and the difference be given to you. Also, if it is noted yeah. that there is an element of fraud in the claims that you have submitted, okay. in that case also, What's the law happen? will take care of you exactly. as a healthcare service provider. Okay. So these are some of the challenges we have. So if the health insurance at one point in time realize that there is that element of fraud, mm. then your claims will not be paid. Right. But there are some genuine mistakes. In a genuine, we call it genuine mistakes. Genuine mistakes. And then a fraudulent uh, presentation of claims. Those situations, I must confess, exist okay. uh, is a, in a human institution. And there's certainly a way out of that. But how have you, what, what do you think is the way out for, you know, your association, all the members of your association, out of all of this? What do you think is the right, uh, is, is the way out? Do you think that you ever get out of this? You were mentioning earlier that the NHIS has a problem. And so do, what do you think we can do to get yourselves out of this problem? Are you going to court? What is it? Um, presently, various institutions have suggested to us to go to court. Okay. I must be very frank and sincere to mention SNEED okay. as an organization uh, requesting the healthcare service providers to, to go to so court. A uh, GRA requested, not in writing, okay. in not suggestion. in writing, but by implication. Why am I saying this? I am saying so because if providers are not paid by the National Health Insurance Scheme, and SNIT comes on them that you have not paid your SNIT contribution on behalf of your staff. Mm. Now, when you explain to them that, look, because the NHIA has not been able to pay me, I am unable to pay you the contribution on behalf of my staff. Yeah. And then you say, no, we will not accept that position. We are mandated to receive the money from you at the end of every month, mm. whether health insurance pays you or not. We are not interested. If you think health insurance is not paying you, go to court and demand your money from the National Health Insurance Scheme. So that, in a way, is telling you that take health insurance to court. Right. It's, it's, it's a clear indication. Exactly. Now, if GRA comes to your office and say, Jack, you haven't paid your PAYE, the word PAYE, pay as you earn, exactly. is suggesting that as soon as you earn salary, you pay. And exactly. here you are, you have not been able to pay a staff. Is there any earning in this case? Yeah. Pay as you earn. The word pay as you earn. Yeah. I have not paid a staff. He hasn't earned anything for me to take his PAYE. Mm -hmm. But of course, once it is mandatory that between first to 14 days of the month, you are expected to pay that amount, you have to go and pay. Failure to do that, they will calculate penalty for you to yeah. pay. And that is also accumulating on behalf of our providers. Mm. In that case, you begin to realize that the providers are suffering from many angles, yeah. from SNIT, from GRA, and all these, and all these institutions, well. including right. electricity companies. So this is uh, for the Ministry of Health to take note of, uh, that the private health insurance and his bag are complaining. And if, they, if you don't take care of this, uh, they'll resort to cash and carry system, which we all know uh, has its own negatives. As we've, I've been speaking to Frank Toblu Richard, who is the executive director of the private health insurance uh, and uh, his bag. And thank you so much for joining us.